Greetings, it's everyone's favorite wacko here, Wacko Bob, and uh, just wanted to uh, do a little something here to uh, get the ball rolling here a little bit on some more stuff. Let me just do one thing here. You know, get get a little bit of AC running because there's a little bit of heat going on out there. Yeah, there's a light on uh, here, and uh, let me turn that off at least. Ah, oh, there we go. Yeah, I just wanted to do a little something here because it's been a while since I've done a video, and I've been uh, studying on um, some things here too because I have been dealing with some things personally too, and uh, the people at Morial Ministries, I love them. I just recently discovered them a few weeks ago, especially especially one of the guys, Jacob Prash, who I think did a who who I think did a very good job on uh, Calvary Chapel, and not just certain Calvary chapels because he did talk about that. But he talked about Calvary Chapel as a whole. And I know there are a lot of people that would have mixed emotions. One more moment. I'm just running around doing things like I'm totally unprepared. Though, I have to admit, uh, you know, there are some things, you know, that uh, really do question it. Like I said... For a lot of people that know, I also do Facebook, and I recently did go back to uh, Calvary Chapel, Fort Lauderdale, after not being there since, really, 2010, really. Yeah, I mean, it was off and on, I should say off and on 2010. I haven't, you know, uh, with Fort Lauderdale. I was going to Calvary Chapel Deerfield for a while, and I'll talk a little bit more about things with Calvary Chapel Deerfield, but, and this may even just talk about it that way, too. And the whole movement at Calvary Chapel, I ultimately left and started going to Victory, Victory Church in 2012. I really didn't want much more to do with uh, Calvary Chapel, Fort Lauderdale. Things were going, going wrong, in my opinion, there. And there were just things that were not feeling right. And there was just some things that were really said over, over a period of time. And I'll be honest with you, my first time back there since Bob Coy, after what happened to him, and I wish Bob Coy all the best, I... You know, some things really just wound up turning me off, and I'm not just talking about his moral failings. You know, I'm talking more along the lines of what 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 went what went, what went wrong with Pastor Bob. Big reason why I say this though is because of the fact that the fact that Doug Sauter, if you ever see this, I think you're doing a great job. I think you're doing a great job there. I see Calvary Chapel going back more to its purpose of what they were set, set up for. It doesn't look like it's a corporate Calvary Chapel Fort Lauderdale. Because it was slowly but surely showing more of a dress code. It was just, it was becoming something it really shouldn't have become. You know, and as much as I have a respect for Pastor Bob Coy, I mean, I'm saddened by what happened with him. I'm saddened by, you know, uh, his divorce he went through, him and Diane's divorce. I mean, me and my mother talked about that. You know, my mother wanted to say shame on Diane. I say shame on Bob Coy because if any sides to this are going to be thought up where this goes, I think it, it would be Diane's side that I'm more inclined to believe. And I, I do believe it because Pastor Bob Coy was the one with the moral failing, not not her. You know, so I think some things may have happened there in, in that regard. I'm not sure. I talked with some people. I love how Calvary Chapel Fort Lauderdale is set up now. One day I'm going to actually talk about that a little bit more. But i got to say, they've really gone back to a certain direction. And a lot of things are different. But I want to talk about James Prash, Prash however you say your name, over over there in uh, Great Britain. Again, you talked about some good stuff. You gave the information and made sure it all made sense and it all was right. And I totally agree with you. I totally agree with you on that, and I think you've done, I think you and Moriel Ministries is going to do, do great things, great things, you know, because I've been doing nothing but watching you guys if I'm not taking care of my own radio network. And <clears throat> to really jump in on this a little bit more, I was impressed by Calvary Chapel Fort Lauderdale for the first time in six years, uh, you know, in six years. You know, more than that, really a lot longer, and I'm trying to use the time that I haven't been there more so than anything else, and and now when I was there a few weeks ago. I like the fact that they've, that they, they are being diverse as far as the look and the appearance of people. 
You know, it's not such a dress code. I'm impressed with the fact that they've taken things like their uh, daily grill and whatnot and have cut back the prices to where not everything is so expensive. Again, corporate Calvary was what we're seeing. And, I, and we're seeing a situation go on here where the same people who thought they were going to get a puppet out of Doug Sauter got something totally different because those same people that moved Doug Sauter up because I think they thought he was going to be a puppet. Doug Sauter is doing everything to a T to where Jesus is the focus of attention. And I think that's great. And I think that's great, and I love what's going on there now, and it's it's perfect. It's perfect. I really, really have to say that, that you know, like I said, I am impressed with what I saw. I will be going there in the next couple weeks. I am kind of in between churches. I was going to Harvest Church, which uh, spun off from uh, Victory Church for a while there. Victory Church is where Pastor Don, uh, the old youth pastor I dealt with at another church, some almost 30 years ago now that um, that you know I've, I've really gone back to that and I'm really excited and happy to be a part of that for the time that I was there I was excited over there at uh, Harvest but there's uh, I don't like a big conglomerate of churches like that I think mega churches with their satellite locations that they're starting I think it's a good thing However, the mega church isn't going to be this big corporate conglomerate. I think eventually, if things, if, things, if things keep going the way they are with Calvary Chapel, and the thing that he said that is true is the fact that, that Calvary Chapels just started to do their own thing. Very unorganized, they were not in one accord, and really, to a lot of extent, still aren't today. I think with what we're seeing happen now... With uh, Calvary Chapel, Fort Lauderdale, with Doug Sauter, I think is great. They went from having 24, 25,000 people to where it's only 18,000 because you don't have rock star Bob Coy. You got, you got passionate, passionate lead pastor or senior pastor, whatever he is there, and uh, Doug Sauter, who I think great teaching, great way he does things. I love the fact that I see bikers that are ushers, even at one of the satellite locations I went to. And when I back when I talked to that pastor there over in, in uh, Boca, I think is great. But really, I love the extent of what is happening today with Calvary Chapel. Um, and uh, you know that part I have to say with the Calvaries I'm connected to. There's still a lot of controversies going on, and that's where I want to talk about this one too, because because I mean the the things going on now with the Greg Lorries of the world. And whatnot. I'm not going to get into too much name dropping right now, but uh, I thought I thought uh, Jacob Prash did a, a great job of talking about what's happening with them. Uh, you know, Paul Paul Smith, Chuck's brother. I'm glad him and his family are able to obtain rights to Chuck Smith's teaching because uh, what's going on with uh, Calvary Chapel today is just is just totally ridiculous. Do I think the movement is going to end with Calvary Chapel? Like what's happening there. Take the dove out, like they're saying. I know there are a lot of people that even know me for Calvary Chapel, Fort Lauderdale. And I know that th this isn't going to be popular to a lot of people. The answer to the question is yes. I kind of, I see the movement ending. I eventually see Fort Lauderdale becoming a little more independent with its own church and its own name. And I think it is strong enough to do that. And I think the church would grow more that way. I think people need to learn more about that. I mean, between Bob, what happened with Bob Coyne telling Tavigian, and I know Tavigian has nothing to do with uh, Calvary Fort Lauderdale. You know, I think a lot of your big churches and your mega churches that are that big, you know, that are supposedly more people friendly, for lack of a better word, I think they're really going to take a hit. And truthfully, to let it be known, I don't know if there's going to be much more of the Calvary Chapel movement. I think you got to look out for a lot of things because, you know, a lot of them did become more about money and power. And I think as things started to grow with Calvary Chapel, Fort Lauderdale, I think that's kind of what happened. I always thought if anyone was going to overcome the odds when it came down to uh, these controversies, these moral failings, and being connected to porn and dealing with demons like this, I thought if anyone could really have done it, 
it would have been Bob Coy, you know, and, I, and I'm sad, and just so people know, I am sad, and it breaks my heart with everything that happened between his divorce with Diane to, to, um, to him having to give up his position of leadership, but I think it got a little too big for him to handle, and I think that it was, again, getting too corporate, too corrupted, within just Fort Lauderdale alone to where when they finally gave Doug Sarder the keys to the kingdom, not just to be the lead pastor as their puppet, but to, to just ultimately take over, I think you saw Doug Sauter get rid of a lot of the things that were misused and abused and that, that maybe shouldn't have been there at all. And I and like I said, I think Doug Sauter, I think his teaching is great. I think he's got a great situation going there. And I just, I, I love the situation for what it is. I like the welcoming center that they have there for a place for a mega church that's eighteen thousand. They show people everything. They did that with me because I hadn't been there for years. They knew that with me, you know, and I was just telling them about it. I eventually want to get the okay to uh, go in there with my webcam and and uh, you know just really show the areas and what they're doing now. I think ministry and Jesus have God, Jesus, and ministry then ministry have really become the importance. It's not about one single person. And I think I think that particular one, that mega church will still be a mega church. I just don't know if it's going to have the Calvary Chapel banner at this point. Because I think I think with, with what's going on there, you know, it's just people are going to really turn on it. I'll tell you right now, if uh, if we were to lose Paul, Paul Smith, Chuck Smith's brother, I think I think the family I think I think the I think the successors and the siblings to the to the Smith family will have a lot to say where this goes and I think that I think that voices will be heard more about more and more about what's happened between the lawsuits that went on again Greg Laurie, Bob Coy, you could, we could talk about them all. Greg Laurie, another one that I'm saddened by and I got no respect for Greg Laurie and I'm sorry to say it that way. I know it's not a thing to be judgmental but do I think Calvary Chapel, do, do I agree with what James Prash has been saying about it over at Moriel Ministries? Yes, I do. I, I, this guy is good. I think, he, I think he really said things. He made sense, and I think he was on par with everything. And that's why I got to say, I don't, see, uh, I don't see the Calvary Chapel movement going. I don't see it going. If Pastor Bob didn't have all these issues all these issues in his life, and he was walking a straight and narrow for Calvary Chapel, he probably would have been the guy that would have been the successor, mainly because he has the biggest church, if not one of the biggest Calvary Chapels, if not the biggest Calvary, cha Calvary Chapel. I think there is one that is bigger. I'm not sure. I'm not sure, but uh, but I, I don't go and try and look for record-sending record churches and what's trending with, with mega churches? I really don't do that, so I'm not going to worry about that end. But again, again, I see Calvary going back to its purpose. I see them going more back to their roots. They're not making everything like it's expensive, and you should do it like in their bookstore and their, uh, you know, and, and their uh, daily grill or their ca cafe that they have during services. I think you're really starting to see. A lot more happened with this that I think is a lot better, and I think it's a lot better off for what's happening with Calvary Chapel, Fort Lauderdale today. I am impressed. However, I do have to say this: I do agree with James Prash. I think I don't think God's the first, God's the first thing in Calvary Chapel with uh, the Greg Lorries and them around. And I'm just I I know I'm not naming too many names. If I could eventually get with uh, anyone there from Murrow Ministries, I'd love to talk to uh, talk to Jacob Prash the most, with Prash him him the most. I would love to get him for an interview on my network to really talk about this because that guy makes sense. It would be great to have somebody other than Pastor Bob Beeman, and I love Pastor Bob Beeman to death. And Pastor Bob Beeman, you're still the best to me, bud. I love what you're doing there with Sanctuary with the uh, houseless friends and and whatnot. It's all great, but. That's all I'm going to say here. Um, you know, I'm babbling a little too much, but uh, who cares? I just wanted to do something for the sake of doing it. I am going to be doing, I am going to be covering the NFL draft today, so there are no shows this week as far as Wacko in the Morning goes. So just check it out. Uh, we do have some big things we're in the process of.
but uh, but it's all good. But if you got something to say about Calvary Chapel, you want to uh, leave your comments, leave them. I am going to be doing something that's going to be a little bit better, where I am going to talk about Calvary Chapel as a whole, because there is a whole thing to go there, because really, Calvary Chapels have not been in one accord in, in a while. And that's something to talk about, too. And I'll talk about my experiences where, where uh, Calvary Chapels went, too, and not all of it's negative, a lot of it's positive, and I just want to bring this up because, again, I am saddened, you know, because I've been, I was at Calvary Chapel way back in 1990 when the hippie movement was supposed to be going on, but we'll talk more about these things later on. Anyways, thanks for listening to me, we'll talk soon.